thank you for coming to my TED Talk. That's something I've always wanted to say legitimately, <laughs> rather than putting it sarcastically at the end of a social media post. You all know the ones. And now that I've said it, it feels really nice. But what am I going to talk about? That's the most important thing, right? That's why we're all here. Let's have a show of hands. How many of you look through the schedule about all today's speakers, the great topics that will be discussed? Let's have a look. Hands up if you've already had a look at the speaker's schedule. Pretty much most of you. Well, mine says I'll be talking about unlocking opportunity. You ready for it? I'm not. OK? Um, it's not what I'm going to be talking about at all. So, surprise. Um, but there is a good reason why I spent months being sneaky, creating diversions. And that's because if I put in the schedule what I was going to talk about, you'd all preempt it. You'd have this little friend that you'd bring along with you as your plus one for today, as I do my talk. And subconsciously, you start to form an opinion, an opinion that's, that sticks with you, and it keeps you out of the unknown. And the unknown is so important to all of us. So instead, I'm actually going to be talking to you about my nipples. As an out and proud trans woman, I can tell you my nipples have been on quite the journey. Um, soon after starting HRT, my nipples became quite scandalous, really. Um, one minute, I could, you know, I could be topless in public. The next minute, I couldn't. What changed? Well, quite simply, I used to have a tick in one box, and now, I have a tick in the other box. That's it. With the exception of very rare genetic disorders, we've all got nipples. Everybody is born with nipples. Some nipple owners are allowed to show them in public. Some nipple owners can't. Some nipples are sexualized. Some nipples are just boring nipples, to be quite frank. And the thing is, as a society, we've decided that nipples define us. And they de divide us as well. And bizarrely, we seem quite proud of this divide because we, we enforce this unwritten rule. And why is it unwritten? Well, because it's not actually an offence for a woman or a man to be topless in England and Wales. Where it becomes an offence is all down to decency. For example, if someone being topless causes distress. But let's be honest here, Teesside, how many of you have actually felt distressed when you saw some nipples? <laughs> Why would a woman's nipples cause distress, but a man's nipples on a calendar with some cute kittens be absolutely OK? We've actually been following an unwritten rule that has shaped our perception of nipples and their owners, resulting in double standards. Today, I want us to start spotting these unwritten rules, to start questioning them, challenging them. We need to free ourselves from these rules. We need to start thinking about how do we get into the unknown? Because, quite frankly, what we don't know can be found over there in the unknown. 
by focusing on what we don't know, that is when we learn the most. So let's look at something you'll all be familiar with. Gender reveals. Honestly, what's the deal with gender reveals? Well, it's the need to know. Why? Why do we need to know? Well, at that moment in time, for the parents, it's the only thing you'll know about your child. The child's intellect, what they like, the sense of humor, sexuality, whether they think pineapple belongs on pizza or not. <laughs> things that you won't know for quite a long time, and some things you won't never know at all. And whether we want to acknowledge it or not, needing to know the gender only serves to comfort the parents, but that's because they've been conditioned to follow unwritten rules. Rules that were passed down to you. So it's not your fault at all. These rules were passed down to you, and you were simply expected to pass them on without question. And you know what? It may seem harmless knowing the gender of a baby. I've heard it a lot of the time. Well, you know, well, it's not doing anyone any harm. What's, what's the matter with it? Well, there is actually a lot that we don't consider because needing to know the gender of the baby before it's even born results in the planting of seeds. Seeds which bloom to basically dictate and control that, that child's life. But our perception of what a boy or a girl looks like or can do is skewed to begin with. How many times have you heard that blue is for boys, pink is for girls, men can do this, but women can't do that at all? We are all individual. We are more than a color, a job, a sexuality, or pizza topping preference. We have so much to offer the world as long as we're able to break free and step into that unknown. So why are we still planting seeds that bloom into weeds for the next generation? Comfort. That is all. Comfort. It's, it's this thing that we need in the here and now to ground us. And, you know, we love comfort so much, we've even given it a name. And that name is tradition. Tradition has become this, this excuse for doing the same thing over and over and over again without question. We just do it. Why are you doing that, it's tradition? even if it serves no purpose anymore, and we don't think about it. It's so that we can feel as though we're in control. It's so that we know, and we take what we know, and we hang on to it. And that's why we don't like being wrong, because what we know is being questioned. And we've become so limited in our way of thinking that the unknown has become so scary. We hide from it. We avoid it at all costs. It unsettles us. But working through our fear helps us to break boundaries. It helps us to understand and to move into the unknown comfortably. We've been doing it together just now. You may not have realized it. It's that easy. By clearing your minds first, I've been able to help you fill it up again with something a bit different, an idea you've never really thought of, or something that you've, you're just looking at, you're reframing, you're looking at it from a different lens. No judgment, no preconceptions, just fresh ideas for the here and now. And it just goes to show that you really can make space when you empty your mind and start to move into the unknown to explore these new ideas, these new ways of thinking. 
And here's the real plot twist. I'm not done yet. The unknown is much closer than you all think. The unknown exists in the mind of the person sat right next to you now. In everybody you've walked past to get here today. In all the people you are yet to meet. Some of you may never have met a trans woman before. Some of you may never meet another trans woman after today, but that's okay. By talking and exploring together, we realize that we have similarities. We realize that we're all shaped by this world, by these unwritten rules. And for us all to exist, there needs to be fluidity in the way that we all think. To go on that journey together into the unknown, unlock the world that is around us. Once I leave this stage, in the break that follows, I want you all to step further into that unknown. I want you all to go up to a complete stranger, and I will be watching you all, I want you to go up to a complete stranger and ask them this. If you were a pizza topping, <laughs> what would you be and why? I guarantee you that by stepping into that unknown, speaking to that stranger, you will learn something about them and just maybe unlock an opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.